ladies and gentlemen, today we're talking about chicken fat. That's right. Chicken fat. This stuff right here. This is pure, unadulterated chicken fat, which I extracted when I made bone broth. And you can too. Do you know what they call this stuff? They got a stupid name for it. It's called schmaltz. Don't ask me. But you know, you've heard of like lard, tallow, duck fat. And in fact, you can go on Amazon right now and buy something called hump fat. I mean, literally fat from the hump of a camel. I don't think I want to use that. But this stuff, oh, this stuff is delicious. And if you fry chicken skins in this, oh man, you're going to give yourself a heart attack. But you're going to love it all the way down. <laughs> just kidding about that but seriously it is delicious fat and there's a lot of things you can do with it and when you make bone broth you can also extract the fat now I used to throw it away but now that I learned about it I want to teach you about it and there's two ways you can extract it and we're gonna do both today so let's get started Smoking. so I made a batch of my usual bone broth and if you want to know more about the process of saving and processing chicken bones and scraps, let me refer you to my video from last year. I can't believe it's been that long. Thumbnail shown here, and I'll leave a link in the description. Now, as you can see, there's a lot of fat floating on top, but there's also a lot of other gunk mixed in, and we need to clean that fat up. So the first thing to do is to get the used up bones and other gunk out of our broth. I'm using this colander to get out all the bigger stuff. We'll use a much finer sieve later. Incidentally, this broth was rendering for 12 hours, so those bones can be crushed between two fingers. Now, I won't be throwing them out. No, instead, I'm going to dump these in the compost pile, where they'll break down and help my garden next year. And now that the broth and the fat are cleaned up of most of the big stuff, I'm going to place these two pots into the refrigerator overnight so that the fat will completely rise to the top and solidify. It's the next day and I'm going to use a nylon scraper to clear off the fat into a separate pot. Then we can clean it up of all water and other bits so we have our clean schmaltz. I try to get just the fat layer, but there's going to be some water and some of the broth and other material, as you will see here in a moment. Once the fat is scraped off, we need to remelt it and then pour it through a fine sieve. I'm pouring the melted fat through the fine sieve, and as you can see, we've pulled out a lot of gunk. After filtering, I dump the oil into this glass measure. And as you can see, there's three layers here. The top is our oil, and the middle is our mixture of water and flour and other stuff from the chicken scraps. And the bottom is just some of the broth that got pulled in. I used a kitchen baster to suck out the undesirable stuff, so I was left with just the fat and then I poured it through a piece of cotton cloth, but you could use a tight-knit piece of cheesecloth as well. And this filters and purifies the fat. And there is our results. All of that bone broth plus a nice jar of smalts. Imagine having to buy all of that at your local grocery. And I got this free, basically from four gallon bags of chicken bones that would have otherwise been thrown in the garbage. I can hear you thinking right now, okay, Smokey Dave, but what am I gonna do with this schmaltz? And didn't you say something about another way to extract it? Well, let me show you the answer to both of those questions in the most delicious way I can. One of the most inexpensive cuts of chicken is the thighs. You can pick up large packages of thighs for sometimes under a dollar a pound at some places. I use the thigh meat when I make stir fry, and I like to prep up a large quantity at a time so I have it ready. Here I have cut up a package and divided it into the bones, 
to be used in a future broth, the meat in those two containers, and the bowl has all the skin and the fat in it. Now I'm going to render that skin and fat in the schmaltz we just created using a cast iron frying pan. And when we're done, we'll have even more schmaltz and a nice treat of something called gribbins or gribbins. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but it's basically fried chicken skin similar to pork rinds, and they are delicious. The gribbins are done, and we've rendered out even more schmaltz. I'll pour that through uh, the sieve here. And then I'll put the grabines into a bowl with a paper towel you kind of see off the edge there. And then all of our rendered fat, once that cools down, I'll pour that back into the mason jar. And as you can see, that's going to fill that jar almost to the top. And let me tell you, those grabines are just delicious. I pretty much ate the entire bowl while I was filming this. I want to thank everyone for watching the video, and if you like what you saw, let me encourage you to try it for yourself. And I'd really appreciate it if you'd smash that like button, and if you haven't already, think about subscribing. I'll be doing a lot more videos like this, and as the holidays come to a close, I'll be getting back to my regular schedule, trying to get out at least one video every couple of weeks. So until next time, don't forget, it's no joke, everything's better with smoke.